commercial aviation, fuel burn is everything. It's how far the airplane can go, how much payload it can take, and how much it costs to get there. So the focus of commercial aviation since the 707 has been, how do we reduce the fuel burn? The way we've done that since the 707 has been to put a fan on the front of the engine. We want to make the fan as large as possible and have it turn as slowly as possible. So that gives us efficiency and it reduces the noise. As far as the traveling public goes and as far as the airlines go, then reducing CO2 means reducing fuel burn, means reducing the cost of travel. So that's all going in the right direction. Everybody expects when they buy a plane ticket it's cheaper than the one they bought the year before. That's been the trend for some time. And that's one of the reasons more and more people want to travel. So travel, I think, is a good social activity. Uh, it promotes social understanding around the world. It encourages trade. So there's no way we should be cutting back on that. We should be doing it responsibly and growing responsibly. The solutions to um, coming to better environment performance won't just be from one actor, it's everybody in the industry uh, that plays its part, whether it's in um, the airframers, uh, the manufacturers, um, the airline, the operators, uh, policy makers, uh, regulators, everybody has to, uh, has to play their role. Uh, it's really a collective um, uh, responsibility. Our goal is to find a pathway to carbon neutral growth by the year 2020 and to actually reduce our carbon footprint as an industry by 50% by the year 2050. Now, how are we getting there? Well, first and foremost, to bring new, more fuel efficient aircraft to the market. Second, to improve the air traffic management system. And then finally, to invest in new types of fuels, biofuels that have a lower lifetime carbon footprint. Engines have improved 1% a year on average for the last 40 years. We can continue to do that for the next uh, 20 or 30 or 40 years. Part of that comes from government funding. In the U.S. it would be FAA Clean and NASA. In Europe, Clean Sky 1 and now Clean Sky 2 is on the horizon. That's very helpful. The EU in particular funded the first Clean Sky program. That's been running for four years now and still has another three years to run. That was 1.6 billion of euros of funding from the EU and from the industry partners. We're now going into Clean Sky 2, which is a total 4 billion euro program with 1.8 billion coming from the EU. We need government uh, to have um, policies that are in line with our long-term um, objectives. Aviation has long product life cycles. We're very different for most industries industries today where the average life cycle is five years, we have a 40-year life cycle and so we need stable regulation and uh, that's where we need uh, to work with government so they understand the specificities of our industry. ICAO taking the lead and setting these things is fundamental as we've seen with the emissions trading difficulties we had when the European Union was proposing to take a more aggressive approach it creates a massive disturbance in the market which then leads to retaliatory measures from certain countries. We can't export our products to some countries because they feel they're being disenfranchised by European regulation which they had no say in. So we need a, a global approach and ICAO is the only forum that can set that global approach. That's in process. It's hard, hard negotiations. You don't get 190 countries to agree very quickly and so people have to have some patience with this. But it's crucially important that it, it is supported by industry but it also has to be supported by the individual governments around the world. Uh, the goal is to have something to be voted on in the next assembly in uh, 2016 and people are negotiating very hard on that so I, I look forward to watching those.